Hi, this is Jeff from Cambanchi, and I have the pleasure today of walking you through how to use Cambanchi as a project management tool for implementing project-based learning lesson plans. In particular, we're going to be talking through the example of this community photojournalism project, which we really like. Now, this guide is int intended to help you weave a project management software into your project-based learning lesson plan. This particular lesson plan, but also any lesson plan generically and we'll show you kind of our framework and how we think it makes sense to do. <clears throat> now, we're also hoping uh, that these timelines will help helpful for you as a teacher in implementing the lesson plan. And then lastly, you know, we know that teaching's hard. I've taught in the classroom and I've taught in the corporate environment. Uh, and any tool that I could find that made my life a little bit easier, uh, I was quick to jump on. So we hope that this tool uh, makes your life a little bit easier or at least a little bit more organized. Okay, so we've devised three different Kanbans for this lesson plan. Uh, and we'll kind of walk through each one's purpose and how you can use them. The first one here is the teacher's guide. The teacher's guide has these four uh, columns here running through each of kind of the discrete tasks. Each one of these cards represents a discrete task. Um, and this first column is preparing for the project. We'll go through in greater detail, but this is your personal teachers only guide to how to implement uh, this lesson plan. The second Kanban board that we think is important to also have is a student or classroom facing Kanban board. So this is one that you can share with the students. You can obviously we've we've prettied it up a little bit so it's a little bit more interesting for students to look at. Um, and you can share this with the class and they can look at it anytime throughout the project. So if they ever have questions about what's coming up what's been done. You can upload uh, notes from class, the outcomes from activities that you do in class here, so that the students can come back and look at it. We're trying to make it a repository for all of the information related to this particular lesson plan. Now the third Kanbanshi board is the student guide. This is this where if you're going to use this as a tool or ask the students to use a project management software to run their own project, this is their repository for their own personal project. So if you have a class of 20 students, there would be 20 students that would have Kanban boards. Now the nice thing is, it, depending on how, uh, if you have access to it, then you can see where they are. You can just pop into their particular Kanban board and say, oh, Steve, Steve, uh, you're not ready for this. You haven't taken any notes. You haven't uploaded anything. What's going on? And potentially do a little bit of, um, disaster avoidance rather than disaster recovery. So we think it's nice from that perspective. The student guide is probably the only one that we think is optional. Um, many classrooms it's not a good fit for. However, if you can do it, we think it's a nice add-on. So coming back to the teacher's guide, walking through how you can use this as a teacher. So let's go here for example. This first column is really where you're going to spend all the time before the, this even touches the classroom. Go in here and to find some sample photo, uh, professional examples of photojournalism. So if you're doing this, you can set yourself a due date. Okay, when do I want to have this done? When should I start it? When should I finish it? Maybe you're going to outsource this to a teacher's assistant. You could come in here and assign it to a teacher's assistant or something along those lines. You can estimate how long you think it'll take. <coughs> and things along those lines, excuse me. You can also attach files along the way. We think this is a great one because this is your repository for all of your details. So we're going to, we think this is a file that would be useful, so we're going to go ahead and upload it so that it's there. And if, if you're doing this prep work weeks before you start it, you don't have to come back looking for it. You're like, oh, there it is. You can pin it so that you can see that you've got the attachment here. This is a nice feature, but you don't have to. You can also come in here and say, ah, oh, you can add comments. Your teacher's assistant can add comments. If the teacher's assistant is working on this, then you can add comments to theirs. You can come up with examples, humansofnewyork.com. I think that's a great one. There's an example of photojournalism for you. And then you have the link right in there, and uh, you don't have to uh, try to remember where you're storing it. Once again, it's your repository for this lesson plan. 
And if you do the lesson plan more than once, if you do it every quarter with a different class or every semester or every year, you can build upon this information. You don't have to recreate the wheel every year, which we think is pretty important. Now, you also have the opportunity to uh, do different color coding. Um, if you have particular ways that you like to organize things, um, feel free. There's, there's quite a bit of customization that you can do here. And the more you make it your own, the more you're likely to use it. And so once you get through the preparing for the project, when you move into the implementation of this lesson plan with your students using Comanche, most of your time early on is spent here. And after that, a lot of your time is going to be spent here. So for example, this four corners exercise. This is a great exercise. We gave the details of how to run this exercise in the teacher's guide, but this is the student facing side. So after you do it in class, you can put the date in here. We're going to do this on, let's say, uh, we'll do this one on not Saturday. On Friday, March 11th. And it's starting it and finishing it the same day. The date comes into here so students know when it's coming up. You can add a checklist. But what's great is attach the file. So you do the exercise in the class. Uh, and we, let's be honest, I'm, I'm trying to find the easiest and most efficient way to do this. So if you have notes from the exercise or if you have notes on the board, take a picture of it with your phone and upload it here. That way your students are going to be able to come back to this. You're going to be able to come back to this and <clears throat> Once again, your, reposit your central repository for all information that they need, as well as forward-looking into information that they'll need in the future. <clears throat> let's, say you have a, uh, let's say you have a storytelling expert coming in. You could upload and save their bio here. You could write a description. Alex Bloomberg is the founder of Gimlet Media and formerly uh, of This American Life. <clears throat> you can learn more at www.gimletmedia.com or whatever. You can, uh, however you like to do it, you can update that information so that your students have data points where they can go and do it themselves. Now, I also love this idea of flagging different projects as homework assignments. So you can come in. We've created this custom color tag. You can create, you can customize all of these color tags. See here at the bottom, edit color tags. We've called the red one homework. I think it stands out. You could come in and set the due date. Like this is, you know what? You have to have this component of it completed by March 23rd. Once again, letting the students know what they're going to have to do, when they're going to have to do it. Um, and it also gives the freedom for those students who have, um, who are working at maybe a faster pace and are particularly excited about this, they can start working ahead and start looking at what they're going to have to be doing uh, down the road. And we don't think there's anything wrong with that. You can also come in and if you decide that Oh, let's see. Oh, here's a great one. Uh, primary document. Okay, what can I learn before I interview someone? You can come in. You can add details. Find one primary source. Find two secondary sources. Write a summary on each source. That way, the students know specifically, very detailed, exactly what you expect them to do as this homework assignment. So we think that's a nice, hopefully this is a nice overview and a nice beginning of what to expect from uh, Kanbanshi and how you can use it as a project management tool. Um, again, all of this, this is, this is up to you. There's quite a bit of customization that you can do around aesthetics, but we think that this template these three templates, these the teacher's guide, the classroom guide, and the student guide is a great place to get started. So hopefully this has been helpful for you. 
Thanks again for tuning in.